It's such a busy time of year, so how about taking some time to sit back, relax, and catch up on all of the movies and TV shows during the holidays. We've got entertainment producer and reporter Terry Hart here. And if anyone knows what to watch, it is you. You are watching like a gazillion films a week. You're going out and you're interviewing the, the cast and the stars of these films, and you're always very honest. Yeah. So we love getting your opinion on what we should be watching this holiday season. Yeah, when I came up with this list, I wanted to come up with things that people would walk away feeling something, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of the movies I'm gonna talk about, I believe are gonna be strong contenders for award season. Yeah. So um, it kind of gets you ahead of the curve before those yes. nominations come out and gives you some kind of water cooler chat. So let's start with Shape of Water. Yeah. Um, this looks like a crazy movie, uh -huh. but it is so beautiful and so full of love. Yeah. It's about a mute custodian, played by Sally Hawkins, who falls in love with a fish man. A fish man. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> now you're telling me, you're telling me that get over the fish man and understand that you will get into this you film, are, you will feel. You will feel. Okay. It's directed and written by Guillermo del Toro mm. and um, he made Pan's Labyrinth, which was a yes. really beautiful movie a few years ago. It's visually stunning, heartbreaking performance by Sally Hawkins and an amazing performance by Richard Jenkins who plays her best friend. It's set in the Cold War. Really go see it. It's okay. worth it. And it's, if you think Hollywood is run out of original ideas, yeah. go see Shape of Water. Go see Shape Incredible, of Water. Incredible, original idea. Now, I, Tanya, is on your list, and so when I first heard that this movie was going to be created, I was like, eh, whatever. You and me both. Right? Yeah. Like, eh, I don't know. Then I saw the trailer. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about this movie. So I, Tanya, it's not a necessarily a biopic about Tanya Harding, yeah. but it really goes into the story of Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan and that infamous incident of the knee cracking. Yes. Many people remember that from the Olympics. Mm -hmm. But what you think you know, you don't know. This goes into who Tanya Harding was as a person, mm -hmm. how she was kind of ostracized from the entire figure skating community because she wasn't affluent. She didn't, right. she was poor and she came from an abusive, challenging family. Allison Janey gives a relentless performance as her mother that is, I mean, she's going to win the Academy Award in front of Best Supporting Actress. And Margot Robbie, I really, really hope squeezes into that fifth Best Actress nomination. Um, I, I'll tell you the other four that, later. That good. It that was that good. good. That transformative. So I, Tanya, which I thought eh, should be a movie of the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, this no. This is a feature film that people are going to be talking about for awards. Ooh, I yeah. love it. Yeah. How about Coco? Oh, I love Coco. This is like yeah. everything Pixar does really, really well. Uh -huh. It's kind of got some tough lessons out there, but it's got yeah. some heartwarming lessons about loving your family and remembering your family. Mm. It's set in the Day of the Dead, so culturally you're going to introduce your kids to something that probably they aren't so familiar with. Yeah. This is definitely a family movie that everybody should see, and the music in it is really great, too. So you've said, I should take the kids over the holiday. Yeah season they will get it at nine and seven this is sort of their world they'll be able to grasp onto it I think that your kids are yeah. the perfect, the age, perfect for age for it yeah love it yeah okay how about uh, let's talk about shows oh, the, yes. crown. the crown season two dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. okay so our appetite for the royal family is insatiable yeah. it seems we can't get enough and now with the Harry and Meghan engagement we yes. can all just sit back and imagine their perfect life in Buckingham Palace yeah so yeah. close right so close so close wow. I mean, just arm's length, like, really. Don't you feel like you could have met him? <laughs> totally. <laughs> like, that's the thing He's about around. them. Yeah. <laughs> and you like, I, I, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's not about Harry and Meghan, but we're yeah. all going to watch season two with that. And the reviews have been out of this world. And I know a friend who literally watched all ten episodes in three days. That I is bingey. That that's is bingey. Bingy. That's bingey. Yeah. But it's hard not to. It's hard when, you know, you see that the next episode is coming up seconds. in, like, 15 seconds. <laughs> I got 15 seconds to spare. Let's just see how the next episode yeah. starts. It's and then the you're in. Hour it's the hour. It's the hour, right? <laughs> you're the, but, you're yeah. in. Um, another Netflix show that yeah. I'm highly recommending is Mindhunter. Okay, this goes back it. to um, when the FBI first started figuring out how they were going to study serial killers. Ooh. So it's kind of creepy. Yeah. Each episode kind of introduces us to a new serial killer. Mm -hmm. Performances are amazing. I was completely surprised at where it took me. It's been announced that it's coming back for season two. Okay. This is worth watching. Okay. Not a family show. Yeah. Don't watch with the kids. Yeah. A lot of these are for adults. Right. Um, but it is really, really great and fascinating. David Fincher 
is yes. behind it. And of course, he made Zodiac right. um, and Seven, so he knows this world wow. of creep creepy, creepy. Yeah. Okay, good, great. but psychological creepy also. Psychological like, so you get creepy. the depth in there and the nuance, which we love. Yeah. Uh, the Greatest Showman. This oh. is back to film. Oh, back to film. You loved this. I love this. Is it because you love Hugh Jackman? I love Hugh Jackman. You do love I Hugh love Jackman. Him. He's yeah. a good interview. You guys do get along really well. I know. He's very charming. He's very charming. Um, and he's a song and dance man yes. in his heart and soul. Zac Efron's great in it. Zendaya is great mm. in it. This is a big old musical about P.T. Barnum and how yeah. he created the circus. Yeah. And it's got great messages in it about loving yourself and being your authentic self, which I love very much. And yes. it's a, it's just a full out musical. Kind of reminded me a little bit of Moulin Rouge. Okay. With that stylistic Baz Luhrmann. Kind, Baz Luhrmann didn't direct this. This yeah, is a first yeah, time yeah. filmmaker from Australia. But um, it is like appealing for the eyes and the oh. senses and tons of color and tons and yeah. songs and oh, singing nice. and jazz hands. Yes! <laughs> you can see from the trailer already yeah. like this is big because yeah. I mean it's called The Greatest Showman so and you want that bigness. Hugh Jackman spent over seven years trying to get this movie made. This oh, was really? his passion project wow. and when I saw it I was like there's nobody else who could have done it. There's nobody else who loves show business like Hugh Jackman. He is the man. He's the showman. Yep. Man. Amazing. And then, what are, what are uh, let's do more? three billboards. Okay, three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Yeah. Mouthful of a title. Yeah. It pays off at the very beginning of the movie, so you understand it. This is definitely a challenging movie. Okay. Frances McDormand will win Best Actress for this. She's Just amazing. Mark, yeah. To mark your ballots now. She plays a grieving mother. Yeah. Um, and Woody Harrelson and Sam Rockwell mm. play two cops who are investigating her daughter's murder. It's mm. challenging. It's difficult. She is angry. She is an angry woman mm -hmm. that this has happened to her family, that mm -hmm. this has happened to her daughter. And she plays that anger throughout the film at like, you don't like her. You, you don't? You don't like her. Because I feel like I would like her, like I would understand. Yeah, you that understand rage. her. Okay, but she's not a likable character, no. which I think that's, that's Amazing. Yeah, it's that's it's amazing an, acting. It's right? an incredible performance, but be prepared. Yes, it takes you on a tough journey. Really quickly, can we do Lady Bird? Yes, we can. Because Lady Bird, it's very talked about. It's very talked about. I think that they're now saying it's the uh, best reviewed movie ever on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh wow! Which I think might be taking it a little far. Okay. Um, but it is a slice of life coming of age story. Saoirse yeah. Ronan plays a 17 or 18 year old girl who's kind of at loggerheads with her mom, played by Laurie Metcalf throughout mm -hmm. the movie. Laurie. Metcalf is phenomenal in the film and it really is what makes it work so well is how specific it is anybody will remember those arguments with their mother at that age right. and but they do still really, really love each other. And it's directed by Greta Gerwig, who was an actress. This is her first time as a director. So there's a lot of love towards her actors in it because she herself was an actor. Does this woman know her movies or what? 